Hey guys, and welcome to, I guess I could call it a new series, I don't really know. This is basically what I guess I'll call fake lol reads, because whenever someone reads something on YouTube and makes a video of it, they usually call it something reads. So I guess I'll follow, fake lol reads. Um, I will not be reading stuff like fanfiction or stuff like that. These are actually my own stories that I'm reading. Um, I, ever since I was young, I loved reading, I loved writing, and I won't go into the story, I've already mentioned it in an update video a couple days back. But I really love what I'm reading, and I really want to just proofread my stories to a point where I know they're good, and get them out there, just to see if people like them. So, I will not be doing this intro on every single video, but I will be trying, and I say trying because I'm not that great at voice acting, I will be trying to keep my voice at a deep, slow-paced read, uh, reading voice. Just so everyone can get the feel of the story and um, also get the get every single word. Because sometimes I can talk really fast. But otherwise, yeah. Um, disclaimer for the video, and I will be doing this at the start of every video. These are my own stories. Uh, so please do not try letting them out as your own. Because I have enough proof to be, um, say these are actually mine. These stories are really important to me, so just a disclaimer about that, these are not anyone else's stories, by the way, these are my own. I can prove it if you want me to. I mean, I'd prefer not to, because that's too much trouble and I don't have that time during the day. But I have heaps of stories of these on my computer with the plans and stuff like that. But otherwise, that's a disclaimer, and let me get into the story. Sky Attributor. Book 1. Hunted. Prologue. The Alert. The city of Tornado, home to the citizens of the Wind Elementals, stood extravagant, adequately tall, and silent in the mysteries of the night. With the dark aura cloud in the city and the silence spread through every inch of the city, the peace was glorious. But then the alert blazed from the center of the tower. An explosion of wind erupting from the walls of the central tower, outwards through the city, designed to, upon impact of any household in its way, to seclude everything inside by forming a barrier, formed of the wind, around the household. Everything inside untouchable from the outside, and vice versa. The burst of wind made its way past all the households within the city, and made an instant stop before the forest circling the city, remaining where it was in its still protective patience. There was no uproar. The barrier around each house not only left people inside, it trapped them in a form, form protection, it also traps all sound, making it easier to hear footsteps, or other details of the culprit. At the same time, if the culprit is inside a household, he can't escape, though that puts civilians inside at risk, except the Sky Templars were ready for that risk. From the central tower marched three teams, consisting of five wind soldiers, each separately marching out on their own, directed paths accordingly, one to the south, one to the east, and one to the west of the city's areas. A bright white apparition immediately hit the ground in front of each team, having come from higher floors of the central tower, and out of the apparition appeared different people in white fancy robes, added with symbols on their sleeves resembling the symbol of wind, which consisted of three spirals connected in the center. The robes, or rather cloaks, as they were made to look menacing and hide the faces of the wearer, had sleeves pulled to the wrists, and a belt tied around the waist tightly. The bottom of the cloak reached their knees, and silver lines were patterned around the belt, symbolic words for the elemental race, reading, Leaders of the Successor Race, Sky Templars of the Wind Elemental. These members were three of the six Sky Templars, in political control of Wind Elementals. The teams continued marching, as the Wind Templars floated in the air by manipulating the wind around them, as a way of flying. The Sky Templars knew the city well, and could lead the teams with their eyes closed. The Sky Templars began announcing the situation. The culprit is known as Spike, the second in charge of Sky Templars. The teams were trained to let their simple emotions hidden. If they weren't, the team would be stuck in their position, weakened, and the Sky Templars did everything to avoid that completely. 
He escaped the tower five minutes ago, through the east direction. Each Sky Templar then announced the areas of the city that each team will search, the east, the west, and the south. They didn't know it, but these teams were basically for civilian control. Sky Templars knew Spike too well. He was strong enough to take these guys out with a simple wave of his hand. Some people take nights, take night walks in the city, and if anyone like that was here, the soldiers were taught to bring them to safety. But for Spike, he had a good landscape of the city's protocols. He knew teams were sent to the east, south, and west, being they led to easy exits, where you can escape into the dark, small forests. But the north, leading to a dark labyrinth of a forest, was not the normal exit someone would take to escape. That is, unless you can get through it without getting lost. The last two Sky Templars were the main threat against Spike. They made their way separately through the northeast and northwest areas of the city, as fast as they can, in caution of Spike and preparation to take him down, or if needed, take him out for good. Guiding their way through the households, the Sky Templar in the northeast area made a quick stop in the center of a four-way path, inspecting what seemed to be a sphere of compressed wind floating in the middle. Immediately, he bit his lip and vanished from his position in the thin air, as the sphere let out a large eruption of air, a sudden rampage of destruction spreading through the area, leaving the ground in a huge mess, and concrete thrown around in every direction. The second Sky Templar heard the explosion, but he didn't make a stop. Instead, he took a large jump, and with each step formed a platform in front of him, from the air, for him to take for him to make impact with allowing him to reach higher into the sky for a bro broader view with a final jump he manipulated the air to grab onto him and allow him to fly through the air at an unbelievable speed reaching the chaos of the explosion he had just heard he didn't seem shocked he knew his opponent well spike was a true wind elemental and a hard man to take down not alone at least the Sky Templar didn't waste his time on the scene. He saw no bodies, and so he continued down one of the paths to continue his search. But within a few seconds, he spun around quickly to push himself to the right, missing only by a couple of inches a thin but long spear formed from the wind, which soon disappeared into the air. The Templar looked around to where the spear had been thrown from, and there was a white, robed man right behind him, wearing the exact Sky Templar robe. His hood covering his face, but more importantly, the man was running for the Templar. The Templar cursed, and immediately was hit backwards by a gust of wind into an invisible barrier pr protecting a household, causing him to fall to his knees. Quickly getting to his feet, the man was already in front of him. Grabbing his shoulders and pulling the Sky Templar down, the figure's knee planting itself on the Templar's chest to keep him down for the figure f to freely punch at the Templar's face, but it was stopped by a restraint of wind holding onto the figure's hand and pushing the figure backwards enough for the Templar to stand. The Templar took his chance and stretched out his hand, a large amount of wind sweeping around the Templar, causing his hood to be thrown off by the gust, allowing his hair to be swept with the wind slowly, the wind wrapping itself around the man tightly, tightly to restrain him completely. The figure struggled slightly, only to be slapped, and his hood pulled back by the Templar, who glared into the eyes of Spike, with immense anger. You deserve this, Spike explained in a growl. His words were followed by a sudden slash of wind from behind the Templar, knocking the Templar off his feet and face down on the ground, the restraint of the wind around Spike disappearing, and allowing him to stand upright properly, but he didn't stay still for long. Spike walked over to the Templar and picked him up by his throat, looking into the weakened Templar's eyes before manipulating the wind to twist around Spike's arm that held the Templar, his arm pulling back slowly. Then with a large amount of force, his arm was lunged forward, the Templar being thrown through the air, allowing Spike to be given the chance to make his run off. Spike had gotten close to the forest entrance. He could see it down the path, but he made a quick jump into the air as he looked down to see the second Templar behind them, having struck forward with a large sword made of pure metal instead of the wind. You always did love those sword creations, using the element. 
Spike sighed as he landed on the ground behind the Templar. The Sky Templar in front of him, his short hair a dark brown, and his eyes intently staring at Spike with his hands clenched, pointing his sword right at Spike. Wind twisting around the blade and down to the tip, before launching a thin beam of highly compressed wind at Spike. But Spike waved his right hand to the side, the beam redirected to the right, leaving the Templar to let out a growl and lower the sword, raising out his empty left hand and clenching his hand to a fist. Around Spike, the air was forming into multiple swords, all aiming at Spike directly, and without hesitation, they struck but were immediately evaporated into the air at once by a simple snap of snap Spike's fingers. Stop fighting back, the Templar cried out in anger, and charged for Spike, making a swing of his sword in hopes to make impact. But he spun. But Spike made a run for the Templar, clenched his hand over the hilt of the sword with the Templar hand also, and raised the sword up high to stop it from moving, while Spike looked into the Templar's eyes with a look of dislike, before his knee met with the Templar's stomach, causing the Templar to fall to his knees in pain, and the sword slipping out of his hand, Spike letting it fall to the ground, where it collided directly into the concrete and stood upright, leaving Spike to run off to the forest. He was finally there. Spike stopped as he exited the huge archway entrance slash exit, made from the giant wall around the city. Around 50 meters from this area was the forest, used by the Sky Templar, sometimes to, sometimes to hunt. Though what concerned Spike most was 10 meters from the forest was the invisible barrier formed from the wind. Through high-risk alerts as the city was through, the Sky Templars most likely had set the barrier to kill any life that touched it, in a simple matter. The shear was created from compressed wind, which was wind elements, which in, which wind elements could control, wind elementals could control and use by building up the wind around them into what could be lethal if it made contact with someone at a large force. In high risk alerts, the barrier pulls inside anyone who touches it, and due to the fast velocity of the wind, the person is killed instantly, with their body being twisted with the wind ending with their body ripped into unidentical parts. A way to escape the high-risk alert barrier, as Spike had learned himself, was to have a greater manipulation over the wind, and cause the barrier to split apart enough that you can walk through the opening without making impact. Spike doubted he could do that, but he wasn't able to even try before a voice was heard from behind him. You can't escape, Spike. You should have known that, exclaimed a voice and Spike turned to face three Templars, blocking his path, along with fifteen wind soldiers followed behind. I don't plan to escape. Can you stop guessing? It doesn't help. I only plan to take a bit of fresh air. Fresh. The Sky Templar that had called out bit his lip, and with a wave of his hand, the wind around his hand twisted, and a long, slightly clear blade appeared, pointing it directly at Spike. Take him out! He's a threat, the Sky Templar ordered. Immediately, the soldiers drew their swords, Spike raising an eyebrow, wondering why they weren't drawn already. As the soldiers ran past their leaders, the Sky Templars created their own wind blades, there was a slight pressure fell from behind Spike, and everyone stopped. The barrier was opening up in an exit, and the man on the other side with his white hood covering his face was doing the work. The Templars were filled with hesitant thoughts, but the far right one snapped back into confidence and ran for Spike, in hopes to stop him before he could slip out. But Spike pushed his hand forward immediately, and the air around Spike pushed the Templars and everyone else backwards, allowing Spike to face the barrier, to pull and make a jump out of the new exit, the man lowering his hands immediately which caused the barrier to pull back together, leaving the Templars on the city side and the exhausted Spike breathing heavily on the ground. The soldiers and Templars stood immediately and growled at the sight of the two men on the other side, but their faces froze when the mysterious man took of his, took of his hood, the Templars turning back to the tower in retreat. Spike slowly stood, wiping the dirt off his robe and smiled, unable to hold back a jump of success. I actually made it, he laughed, and with a sudden thought like remembering the man, turned around, seeing the man in the white jacket. Who are you exactly? asked Spike. The man raised his head 
back to Spike. His similar long black hair to Spike's flowing through the air as the man smiled. He was an older man to Spike. Forty years older, maybe. In elemental years, that is. If it was the age span of a human, the man would be around twenty years. Age difference to Spike. Due to elementals aging once in a half a human year. But their looks like crinkled skin, height, grey hairs, etc. Change at a slower rate. And they survive longer. Sort of like an advancement, Spike always liked to think. It may have been only five years, though I had hoped your memory would be better, son. The man explained, rubbing his hair with his right hand. Upon those words, Spike's smile ret returned, and his arms wrapped around his father as the two embraced tightly. Spike unable to hold back from smiling massively. I knew you'd come back sooner or later. Why now, randomly? Just a feeling. I knew they'd take action against you soon. I had to hurry. Seems I was just on time. Spike let, a Spike let go a little as he looked back up to his father in confusion. Do you know something? Like, why they are after me? The man shook his head in disappointment, looking to his left into the forest. I didn't get that far. The only thing that I understand is it's something to do with what they call an ancestral connection. But I've never heard that term before. Spike also hadn't heard that term before, and he'd been a Sky Templar for many years now. But instead of letting the time waste and risk the barrier being shut down for the Templars to chase them easier, he made his way into the forest. It's about time we leave. Isn't that right, Sol? Spike let out his father's name in a slight nervousness. It had been ages since he had mentioned his father's name. It was pleasant. Sol made a quick glance at the City of Tornado for the last time before following his son into the forest's labyrinth. Where have you been for the past five years? asked Spike. Mainly in hiding. Your old home, Willery, actually. Spike for his first two human years had lived alone in a small village-like area on a cliff called Willery. There, had been ra there he had been raised by his father, Sol, and his brother, who was also his teacher, Raven. It was a deserted village nowadays. No one has lived there in years since the Sky Templars who surveyed the area decided to cut it off from the funds, like food and protection, due to its small size. It was a perfect place to hide. No one goes there anymore, and it's on the border of the survey tower the Sky Templars have to watch the majority of their territory. The tower there was protected and used as spectating the border, but the small areas are rarely noticed due to laziness. Anything new there? asked Spike. Sol shrugged. It's a ghost town still. I was hiding with Raven. There's very few households now. Most have become their own ruin to old age and rot. Raven's still there? asked Spike. Sol nodded. I left there a day ago. I reckoned you'd either be dead, well, captured, or about to be hunted. So I had to do something. Spike laughed. So they were deep into the forest now, and it was hard to see, until Sol took out a flashlight from his robe and lit the path ahead. It seems he knew his way around this place unbelievably well, actually. Raven has a small base under the cliff, guarded by a boulder, but it's on the shore below. It's incredible. Technology like computers, trackers. He's even connected himself to the human satellites. He hasn't just been sitting around doing nothing, Sol laughed. Always being prepared as usual. I'll have to check it out one day, thought Spike. Sol nodded and turned off the torch as he realized the trees around them come to an end, leading onto a pathway between two high cliffs. Where are we going? asked Spike. Sol took the lead. Out of the Sky Templar's re um, out of the Sky Templar's region. We need to find a safe place before we risk teleporting. Knowing them, they're tr they're tracking whatever they can whatever they can for sudden teleports. Spike sighed. Then we need to head through this valley. Their search capabilities end at just around the start of the ocean at the end. Thankfully, one of us remembers that. It was around another hour they walked. They had almost exited the valley, the ocean in their sights, but Sol stopped, and after a little silence, Spike knew why. We're surrounded, it seems, Spike sighed. Sol nodded and looked around, staying in his position. There's too many to take out at once, even with my control over wind ele uh, manipulation. 
Sol whispered. We'll have to wait till they attack first. Stay calm, Spike explained. Sol pouted and whispered, My own child telling me that's sheesh. Ignoring Sol's insult or whatever it had mean, Spike began to twist the wind around his arms, beginning to prepare for the fight, except Sol had different plans. He closed his eyes, opening them with his eyes now a solid white, changing his eyesight to view the commotion among the wind. There were several parts of the ground uneven with the rest, be it a little bumps or just slightly altered. Sol then closed his eyes and opened them again to make them normal again. Upon opening them again, Sol muttered something to himself. The words, Michael's men, escaped his mouth, and thus begun the ambush. Tens and tens of men jumped from the thick grass. Different unique clothing styles, all either holding a steel blade or other different weaponry. Sol immediately ran for Spike, and brought out a bronze ring from his pocket. As Spike turned to face him, seeming ready to attack, Sol whispered something to the ring. And within an instant of the ring going onto Spike's finger, caused Spike to disappear from sight. The men landed <clears throat> the men landed around Sol, their weaponry prepared, but Sol simply put up his hands as if surrendering. So easily, huh? asked the soldier. Sol grinned. Not exactly, he explained, and with a clap of his raised hands, a wave of wind from around them all tore into the group, taking out several of the men immediately without warning. You're not getting Spike Sol roared. The men took action, and in big members struck for Sol with swords, whips, and nunchucks. Striking for Sol, but Sol just ducked. A sword having just missed his head, and using his left hand, Spike pushed the sword and the wielder off. Back, um, the wielder of it, backwards with a kick to the man's stomach. The man hid in the ground where Spike should have been, but nothing was in the way. Sol commenced to snap his fingers as he stood up and faced two attackers before him the wind around them, stabbing through the skin in multiple parts, creating holes in their skin and blood flooding out, the men screaming and falling limp. The thrill of the fight was getting to Sol, the addiction of outsmarting and outfighting his enemy. It had been so long. Now Sol was focused. He focused on three more targets, pushing out his hands on two of them running at him and closing his eyes. The wind behind them forming into several solid, long pointy spears, immediately jolting towards the target. The men stopped and bent backwards in pain, as their back was penetrated, and out of their stomach shot the spear which disappeared into the air, blood flowing out continuously as they hit the ground. The other spears then shot for the target's necks, and penetrating through, the men letting out a, letting out a whimper each, as their soul left their bodies to die. Sol eyed the crouched third target, the man's red glowing sword stabbed into the ground. Sol had been careless and didn't even know. Cursing quickly, Sol was stabbed through the stomach by a similar glowing sword, diagonally shot from the ground behind Sol. As he coughed blood onto the ground, a red light appeared around Sol, Sol's body growing lifeless, and the red light shimmering down to the sword, where it disappeared, and the sword retreated back into the ground leaving Sol's body on the ground. The remaining seventeen men headed for Sol, one of them crouching over him and tapping his back. Then with an order from the man with the glowing sword, who stood and raised his hand, they all sunk into the ground, creating passages through the earth, which sealed up as they passed, Sol's body being carried along with them. It took a few minutes, but Spike reappeared, on his knees and his face in his hands, sobbing. The ground around him was slightly covered with blood, and littered a little with bodies, though he didn't notice. No, he sobbed repeatedly. After saying the same thing four times in a row, he scraped his hands down his cheeks, clawing them, letting out a large scream. Damn it! There were slight scratch marks on his cheeks, as his face was lowered down. Who? Who is this Michael? He muttered. Remembering his father saying these guys were Michael's men. I'll kill him, Spike cried. Crush him. Cut him. Painfully, too. Then Spike raised his head. He said they're not getting me. Did he know something after all? Did he know something after all? 
then that means Michael knows something too. Spike raised his head and slowly let out a laugh, a sadistic smile on his face, which grew out, and his right hand clenched down in front of him, which soon loosened with his smile, his smile just appearing, and his legs letting him stand up again. Perfect. That is the end of the prologue for Sky Jupiter. Um, I will not be saying things at the end of the future episodes of these read things. I just wanted to add one at the end here. Mainly, basically, basi nah. basically saying sorry that I did uh, did mess up quite a bit. Um, I don't even know how to explain why I do that. Besides the fact that my eyes aren't that great. Like, when I'm reading things, I can read things perfectly, but sometimes my eyes just flutter a little. They, the coordination of my eyes go off, and so I I know what I have to read next, but I don't know what I have to read next at the same time, so I mess up thinking that I'm not going to be able to read it right, and so it makes me get tongue-tied, and that's why. I actually did pause the video in time to stop that from happening heaps of times, but other times it just didn't happen. But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this prologue. Uh, these will be happening every week. Um, I did mention in my update video that I might do it every Saturday and Sunday, but I don't, I don't know yet because I need to proofread these stories and proofreading these stories do take time. Doing two chapters will take time because if I just rush it, then I get worried that I'll be typing too fast when I'm, re when I'm editing because sometimes I take stuff out and then put it in with new stuff that makes sense. That's what I did with this chapter. When I read this chapter the first time, half of the stuff made no sense. So, well, I mean, not really made no sense, but it just wasn't right. But, yeah, I won't go into that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And, yeah, this was Sky Jupiter. This is, um... I'm sorry this is not your type of story. It probably isn't. I always get worried. As a writer, I'm sure a lot of writers get this. But as a writer, I just... I really get worried about how my story is. How my story feels. And I love my story. But I love my story because of the ideas I have. If I was meant to just focus on the prologue, I get worried. I get worried like, is this good? Is this actually good? Is this the kind of thing people will like? I don't know. But I don't mind if you guys don't like it. That's your opinion. I'm actually just doing this because I like doing this. And if you guys love this, cool. Just say, if you don't like it, tell me, is there a certain bit you don't like? Is it my voice? <laughs> um... Did you think it was missing something? I don't know, but the future chapters will be coming. Um, if I want to put them out faster, I will do them both Saturday and Sunday, but I will not be pushing them out there fast, straight away. I'm not that desperate. But yeah, I really look forward to reading the rest. I'll try to get a good reading voice back, because that voice was okay. I still need to listen to the recording and see if it sounds okay, but if it sounds okay to you, that's awesome. Um, I also need to stop stuttering, so maybe I should read the chapter to myself for a while and just memorize what's going to happen and stuff. I don't know. I really don't know. I, I can memorize events really easily, but when it comes to memorizing the exact words um, that's used, it's very annoying. But yeah, this was Sky Jupiter, the prologue. Uh, chapter 1 will be next week. Uh, the chapter 1 is called Tracker. So yeah, hopefully you guys look forward to that. Now I have to go edit this video and add text to it, so, yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Catch you next time.